Hello, welcome everybody to this latest presentation from Find My Past. Uh, my name is Paul Nixon and I'm going to be telling you about the British uh, records in India which we publish on Find My Past. So that's me on the right. I've worked at Find My Past since August 2010 and uh, coincidentally I came to Find My Past in August 2010 hot from India. I'd moved to India in 2003 uh, lived there for seven years, had a very happy time in Bangalore in South India, and I came back to uh, find my, back to England to work for Find My Past. So today I'm going to be talking to you about the British in India and what you need to do to investigate uh, where your ancestors were and the records we have where you will find them. So I have India connections, as I say, I've, I've uh, lived there myself, um, but going back some years, uh, my Four times great-grandmother, Sarah Franklin, was born in Meerut in 1842. She was the daughter of a soldier, a corporal with the Norfolk Regiment, or it was the 9th Regiment of Foot in those days. It would become the Norfolk Regiment. Um, and uh, she was one of three children born in India. Her father died there in 1846. Um, at some point, Sarah came back to, um, back to Britain. Uh, this photo probably dates to the 1890s or early 1900s. So that's that's the earliest India connection I have. I suppose, well, I suppose her father is the earliest one when he went there with the regiment. And then bringing, bringing it right up to date, you're really completing the circle for me. Um, you have my family. So that's my wife on the left, who's a native Indian from the Northeast. Uh, and then myself and my three children, uh, all born in Bangalore. So Sarah Franklin is their fourth times great grandmother. Um, and that's on my maternal side. And then uh, that's my father on the right. So that's quite nice for me. I, I just quite like that, uh, completing the circle there with the, with the Indian connections. So what we'll be looking at today, I'm going to be telling you how to create uh, an India specific landing page on Find My Past. And that might, for some of you, be the most interesting part of this presentation. That's not to uh, do down what follows it, but, uh, but it's a very useful um, piece of knowledge to have actually. So, so that's what I'll start with and then we can look at what Find My Past publishes. Uh, I won't go through every single collection um, from top to tail um, but you, because you'll be able to find that out for yourself and that's part of the enjoyment I always think seeing what, what's there and what you can find. Um, talking a little bit about the India Office Collection at the British Library, um, talking about partners like Phibis, uh, which is the Families in British India Society, um, other resources and a reading list. So let's crack on. So uh, creating your own landing page. So I think this is very important and it's um, maybe a little known tool that you, you can use on Find My Pass. So you can see here, if I, if I go to the homepage on Find My Pass and then click the search screen, this is what appears. So you've got the option there at the top to search all records. So you've got the A to Z records on the right. And then you've got categories which we've created on Find My Past to make it easier for people. So you can, you know, if you're looking for churches and religion, you click on that button. If you're looking for travel and migration, you click on that, etc. You know, it's easy. It's supposed to be easy. Um, and it is easy, actually. So, uh, so those are the categories which, which we've created for you. But you can also create your own categories. And I'll show you how to do this. So first of all, you need to click on the search all records button there on the top left with the big magnifying glass and then you'll have the option to uh, to search particular countries or territories so you could you could say that you want to search the world records or in this case that you want to search Britain records and um, although you won't see India on that drop down there we file the Indian records we, we um, organize them under Britain um, primarily I suppose because the records that we're talking about are mostly from that period of history when the British were in India, so, so pre-1947. But you don't necessarily need to, for that matter, click on Britain. This, what I'm going to show you now works just as well for the world records as well. But for, for the purpose of this exercise, click on that Britain button, select Britain, and then click on the search Britain records button at the bottom. Once you've done that, you'll have different boxes that appear. And as you scroll down, you'll see the category box, the subcategory, record set, and optional keywords. And you're going to be search you're going to be searching on the record set because what we're doing, we're looking at all the records in within the Britain collection, and we're going to be filtering some of those record sets, those ones that we're interested in. So we're not going to be interested in British Army Service records for this collection. We're not going to be 
uh, interested in school records for this collection, we're going to very much be focusing on India because that's what we're looking at, isn't it? We want to find India records. So you click on that browse record set button. And when you do that, another box pops up and that's the filter by record set button or box rather. Now into that box, I have typed in the top right hand box, the search box at the top, I've typed in the word India because that's now saying to find my past, okay, find me all those record sets on find my past that have the word India in them. And that's what's come up. So I, I can now basically select all of those records that have India that I think I'm going to be interested in. And once I've ticked all the boxes, I'm then going to click the apply filters button at the bottom. And when I do that, you'll have another screen which will pop up. And that's the screen. So what this has done is say, OK, you selected British casualties, Indian mutiny. You selected British in India. You selected British India Office Army and Navy pensions, etc., etc. All those records that I selected have now appeared in my in my in my screen here on Find My Past, and it's telling me that there are just over two million records there altogether. So that's the basic search. I that, that's I've I've already filtered now. I can create this. Um, I've created this search of just these record collections. And the next thing to do would be to click on that button there on the view 2589402 results. And you will then start seeing the records listing up the records that we have in that collection. What you then need to do is click on the URL that's been created. You'll see that in the top, top of the top of the page. Click on that URL and save it, bookmark it. And then that, that's your India landing page. It's as simple as that. And that can work for other records as well, for that matter. We've talked about India, but you could also do one for schools. So you go through the same process. You'd, again, we're looking within Britain records. Um, and in this case, rather than typing India into the box, I've typed school into the box. Um, and then all these record sets with the word school in them appear. And I, I would do the same, go through the same exercise. So I'd be ticking those boxes and applying the filters. Once you apply the filters, the same screen is going to appear with all the lozenges showing you that you've selected these records. And if you then click on the search, you'll get the search results. And it's that URL you need to click on when the search results appear. Save that. And that's your Find My Past School homepage. And you could do it for uh, Catholics, for instance, as well. Here's another one. Here's one I did earlier, Catholic records. Um, I find this very useful. Um, at one stage, we used to have a British in India uh, homepage, landing page. That's no longer there. Uh, but I, I've kept this on my desktop at home and at work uh, as, as, a, as my own search that I've constructed myself. And I find it very useful. It's a shortcut. Um, so I hope that's useful for those of you who didn't know that. Um, let me know if there's any issues um, with that. But I hopefully that's explained it sufficiently. So go to the uh, territory you're looking for, Britain or the world, uh, filter on the record collections you want to look at, select from the list, click on the results when, it, when the results number appears and then save that URL. That's the important bit, save the URL, call it, you know, you call this one Britain school records or Catholic records or India records and there it is there you, you've bookmarked that next time you just click on that bookmark and there and there you go straight to the search page so that's that um, so record sources uh, for find my past so we publish records primarily they're records that are held in the India office collection at the British Library um, British Library are our valued partners key partners for us of course for these records and for electoral registers, electoral rolls, and also newspapers, of course. So the bulk of the records that you'll find here are, for, are from the British Library. Um, we also publish records from FIBIS, which is Families in British India Society. I'm just going to move this little box at the top of the screen so you can see this poor chap's head. There you go. Um, and Cabristan Archives is another partner. Um, Eileen Hewson uh, is the person behind that site. She has some very useful records, which we also publish. Now, um, we're talking about records from India. These are mostly, almost exclusively records that relate to Europeans and mostly 
British Europeans and Eurasians. There are very few records for native Indians. Um, the photos on the right are my photos from my collection. Um, they're, they're taken in the studio in Madurai in Tamil Nadu um, and they show the same soldier in, in his khaki dress and in his um, plains dress, his, his Indian whites dress, uh, worn during the hot summer months. So uh, let's look at births and baptisms first of all. There's Sarah Nelson again on the right. So you'll find on Find My Past um, over 735,000 birth and bapt baptism records from the British India Office collection at the British Library. Um, it's worth remembering, of course, that the India Office also administered returns from places like Aden, Burma, Macau, Penang and Sumatra. And so you'll find records for those territories as well. You can filter by presidency in India, um, but, but you can't filter by country. So for instance, if you were looking for somebody in Penang, you couldn't, there's no option to search for Penang, but if you filtered on Georgetown, you'd find the records for Georgetown in Penang. Uh, that's a typical baptism record in this case uh, from Bombay, by the looks of things. Just move the screen again, yep. Um, so you've got all the, all the, it's pretty similar to English parish registers for that matter. So you've got the details of the um, baptism date. Uh, you've got the birth date as well. And in this instance, you've got the forename, the gender of the baby, parents, um, the surname, uh, where they were living. In this case, th these records are from Aden. Um, so, the, so they're, it's the archdeaconry and, and district of Bombay, but these people were living in Aden. Um, and then you've got details of the father's profession and the officiating minister at the end. This is uh, from uh, Sarah Nelson's baptism. So you can see there, uh, she was she was born in Meerut, but she was baptized at Subatu, which is 176 miles away. Um, so she was born in August 1842 and baptized in July 1843. Um, Subatu, and I can't guarantee I've pronounced that correctly, um, is a hill station, I believe. Um, the Norfolks might have moved there, or the, 40, uh, the 9th Regiment of Foot uh, may, may have been stationed there at the time. I've not investigated that. But anyway, you've, the, the point is you've got some good information here. You've got uh, her, her details, her name, uh, daughter of John and Margaret, and you've got his profession as well. So he's a corporal in, it says HM, which is Her Majesty's uh, 9th Regiment of Foot. So, um, marriages next um, to complement the births of the baptisms we've got 475,000 individuals recorded in marriage registers F records are from the British Library and from Phibis so we have the names of brides included and fully indexed as you'd expect of course um, names of the bride and groom's fathers are included from the mid 19th century onwards and again, the returns include Anglican parish registers for the three presidencies in India. That's um, and the Roman Catholic and civil registers and records for other regions connected to the India office. So again, Aden, Burma, Kuwait, princely states, St. Helena, etc. Incidentally, I should go back and um, this, this um, soldier and his wife are un unrelated to me. Um, they were published on my uh, British Army Ancestors website, and um, I believe they're from uh, Sarah Taylor, showing her uh, ancestor there, who was obviously served in the Boer War, is wearing his Boer War medals, and they, and they were uh, married in a cathedral in India, Ahmedabad uh, Cathedral. Quite some setting. Oh, there you go, sorry, Allahabad, not Ahmedabad. Um, so that's the register for, for their wedding. It was James Oliver Turner and uh, uh, Ada Lois Hocking. Deaths and burials. 
Over 600,000 individuals recorded in deaths and burials registers. Uh, records from British Library, Phibis and Cabristan archives in this case. Records are made up of uh, British India Office ecclesiastical returns, uh, India Office deaths of staff and British India Office or presidency burials as well. So on the right, you have a photo, uh, Private A. Lily White, Second Royal Sussex Regiment, who died at Amritsar on the 24th of July, 1900, aged 23. Uh, one of his grieving colleagues, possibly a relative, uh, standing by that grave as well. And this is his burial uh, entry register on Fima Pass. So you've got burials at Amritsar. Uh, you can see that he's there, bottom of those three entries, Alfred Lily White, uh, 23 years old, private in the 2nd Battalion Royal Sussex Regiment. Um, you can see he died on the 24th of July 1900 and he was buried the following day. Uh, he died of enteric fever, typhoid in other words, uh, which you don't get from the photo but, but it is there on the on the return. And such was the, um, the nature of the climate that you would often have people who would be uh, die in the morning and buried buried at lunchtime and possessions sold in the afternoon. It was, it was as quick as that. So if you go to the, uh, here's an example of how to find out more from the record collections in the India Office series that we publish. So if you click on this example, for instance, so this is from the British in India collection on Find My Past. Um, under each of the titles, and the summaries, you'll see buttons that invite you to learn more or to look at useful links. Um, so click on that. Here's the learn more section. So this tells you what those records will tell you. Um, so for each of the collections we publish, we publish uh, some narrative. And in this case, it says these are card indexes um, providing information about baptisms, birth, burials. These are from uh, Society of Genealogists, the records. And on the right, the useful links part of that um, link at the top of the page gives you those useful links. So you've got a useful link back to the British India Office Collection, to Society of Genealogists, to baptisms, to marriages, etc. So it's always worth clicking on those links to find out a little bit more about the records we publish. Um, here's a resource which is which is a great resource but it could be better um, and I discovered this when I was preparing for this presentation looking through the different collections we have. So this is British in India, India directories 1792 to 1948 browse. So you'd click on the browse title bar and you'd see a drop down of the different titles that we publish. There are 75 directories in all including Thacker's directories, and um, army lists for India, etc. So there's 75 in total. It's a great resource, but it's very, but it's very difficult to to work your way through. Actually, um, the images for each individual uh, for each directory are served up as individual pages. Um, if OCR does exist, it's certainly incomplete for some. So it means that you have to trawl through. It's it's no better than picking up a book off a shelf and tr trying to find it find your way through it. Um, so it's quite it's quite tricky, um, and I've uh, having noticed that I've uh, set up a ticket to improve this. So hopefully this search experience will improve before very long. Um, so you'll have a different search box there. You'll be able to search for names. You'll be able to um, browse the title still. So you'll be able to fil filter the title and be able to look for the year range, and it will be OCR. So you'll be able to pick out those names straight away. So once we do that, um, that will be a tremendous resource. It's already a great resource if you've got the time and the uh, interest to go through the publications but if you want to go quickly to the, the person you're looking for then it's then it can be a bit of a job at the moment but anyway anyway so that's that's a, a work in progress and that will be done um, later on in the year newspapers um, I guess you could argue that newspapers are the jewel in the crown for for FIMA Pass as, as regards India records um, they're certainly very useful uh, adjuncts to the records we publish, the index records we publish. And, we, and you can see we publish an awful lot of newspapers from India. We publish the uh, the Bangalore Spectator, you know, from the major the major territories. Calcutta, of course, was the uh, heart of the administration of the 
uh, East India Company and, and later on uh, the British government was based there as well. Um, so you've got newspapers from, from Bangalore, my old stamping ground, Bombay, Calcutta, uh, Madras as well, uh, now of course Chennai. And coming soon we'll have the Civil and Military Gazette which was published in Lahore. Um, and Roger, Roger Kipling was the editor there for a while and uh, he published uh, some of his early poems there as well. So that'll be coming very soon. Uh, those films, cans have been ordered from the British uh, Library and, and we'll be publishing those in due course. But even so, at the moment, you've got a very good range of Indian newspapers. Um, the example I've shown is from the Homewood Mail and it's uh, dated September 16th, 1857, which of course was a crucial time in history for for us and for India, depending on which side of the fence you sit, it's either the Indian Mutiny or it's the first uh, Indian War of Independence. Um, I remember when I was living in India, going into a bookshop in Bangalore and asking the, the bookseller there if he had any books on the Indian Mutiny. And he said, no, sir, I'm sorry, we don't. But um, but if you come along here, we've got some books on the first Indian War of Indi Independence. Um, so there you go. It was, it was the same event, of course. Um, regimental chronicles are, are great. I've I've got many chronicles. I've, some of my chronicles are published on Farmer Past, actually. Uh, that's the Rifle Brigade and the King's Royal Rifle Corps chronicles are all published on Farmer Past, which you can access. Um, this extract is from uh, the Oxford and um, Buckinghamshire Light Infantry chronicle, and um, I bought a complete run of these early in the year, so that goes from 1892 to. Um, well, way up until the, the 2000s, actually. Of course, it wasn't the Oxford and Bucks Light Infantry in 2000, but it, but it did, um, it was succeeded and, and renamed. But anyway, I'm only going to read this in the way that uh, uh, late General Sir Bernard Charles Tolver Paget might have, uh, might have spoken. I just think it's the, the, the text that follows is beautifully constructed, um, and it's um, an economy of words. And, and really sums up uh, the British position in India at the time, I think. It's straight out of Ripping Yarns, uh, Michael Jones and, and um, uh, Michael Palin and Terry Jones, uh, and, and the boys' own magazines. But anyway, he writes, uh, in the cool of the early morning, I set forth on my bicycle from Malapuram in Malabar, where I was stationed on detachment with C Company to overawe the fighting Moplars. I was bound for the jungles of Nilambur in the hopes of bagging a bison. Magari, my shikari, bearer, coolie, and bullock cart had started the day before with my kit. I had an easy ride of 22 miles along a good and shady road and arrived at Nilambur while it was still cool to find a bath and breakfast ready for me in the Dak bungalow. And so it continues in that vein, and it's wonderful to read it. Um, and I'm sorry, I can't help reading it in the accent. Um, but but it's, um, it's a joy to read, and it really is a, an insight into how the British... Uh, lived in India, the, certainly the officers, he was a second lieutenant, or he was a lieutenant at the time, he would later, I was pleased to see, um, I knew, knew nothing about him, but I was very pleased to see that he had a successful time in India, had a had a sterling career in the First World War, survived the First World War, uh, and was later a lieutenant, a, a general, um, during the Second World War, and he lived to a good age as well, 1887 to 1961. So, um, those regimental chronicles are great. They not only you not only get narratives like that from um, uh, Lieutenant uh, BCT Paget, but you get the detail of where the battalion was stationed. You get uh, movements of people coming in to the regiments, to the battalions. Um, and they're very very useful indeed. And you can find, as I say, King's Royal Rifle Corps Rifle Brigade. We publish online. Um, there are plenty of other chronicles as well, which you can some some of which are also published online as well. I recommend those heartily. Um, so the British India Office, um, the India Office records comprise the archives of the East India Company, Board of Control, India Office, Burma Office. There are 14 kilometers of official records together with the India Office private papers um, and good news is uh, um, like everywhere else British Library has been closed, locked down, but some of the reading rooms are reopening from the 22nd of July. Check the website there, the bottom catalogues and uh, collections with a typo I see. Um, but anyway, check the website www.bl.uk. And it definitely is worth going there. I mean, we publish um, key records for, for the British India Office, bap baptisms, marriages, burials, as already explained. But there's plenty of other records there which are 
um, fascinating to look at. Um, here's one which I have mentioned in, in a military presentation in the past. I photographed these myself and these are embarkation lists for the army for, for, which covers the period 1871 to 1889 albeit some years are missing. Um, you get some good information there, regiment rank, name, age, date of enlistment, remarks and date of embarkation to India. Uh, they're in fragile condition these registers but um, you know, the, so many records of servicemen did not survive. Um, so, for instance, that chappie who was uh, who I looked at earlier on, who died of enteric fever, uh, he won't have a service record because um, there, it was deemed not necessary to keep his record. But he may well appear on an embarkation list like this uh, when he went out there. So, so it's definitely a resource worth looking at. And that's held in uh, IOR, India Office uh, Records. L Mill 1542 and there's uh, volumes 43, 44, 45 and 46 as well. They're all embarkation returns. Um, you can get to that by going to the um, British Library website as I say. Um, so you, you go to the British Library main address which I gave you earlier on and then explore the archives and manuscripts and you can type in here um, in this case, I've typed in that um, Indian Army Records reference. Um, in this case, it's a different reference, actually. It's Mill 14, and you'll see why in a minute. So within this uh, Mill 14, you have um, several thousand, many thousand records of servicemen who latterly served in India. So in this case, I, I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about George Arthur James Welch whose medals I bought some while ago, but I th it certainly was when I was living in India, actually. I, I ordered the medals, bought them, and they were delivered to my parents' home in Chelmsford in Essex at, at the time. Um, and he, I, I'd, I'd not found his records in W0363 or W0364. Um, there was a medal index card, that was it. Um, it was only later on that I realised that he'd served with the Indian Ordnance Department as well um, and his records are held at the British Library um, and that's often not known by people that if you can't find your army ancestors service records in the usual places so W0363, W097, uh, W0364 it's worth checking in the India office um, or in the India office catalogue to see if his records are there and in this case uh, George Arthur James Welch's records were there. Uh, he had been born in India. Um, he joined the army at 14. Um, he pretty much lived and died in the regiment, honestly speaking. He, he served for many years. As you can see, he's got a long service good conduct medal at the end there, um, a, a Delhi Durbar medal as well. Um, it's a nice little group, that one. Um, and, and I was delighted to find 30 odd pages of his service record. So, so those are all in that IORL Mill 14. And if you wanted to get straight to his record, you can also type in his surname, which I have done there. You can see that in the top box. So uh, again, that's uh, very useful to find out. But do, do have a look at that uh, British Library catalog. It can be a little clunky to get to, um, but once you're in there, spend some time, find your way around, work out how, how to use it, um, and then click through the different categories. It's all fairly logically laid out and you can see exactly what the British Library has. Um, but as I say, they've got uh, X number of kilometres of shelving of these records. We publish a fraction of those records, but there's an awful lot there. Um, if you can't get to the British Library, then um, you can always hire a researcher to look for you. But definitely a resource worth checking out. Uh, National Archives of India. I have never been there, to my shame. Actually, I was in Delhi for a little bit, but I've never, but I've not been to the National Archives. I I understand there are records there. I, I I wish I knew more about what is there, but but certainly there are records that will relate to the British in India. Um, if you've read any of William Dalrymple's books, uh, the White Magal's Last Magal. Um, um, the Return of the King, etc. Any of those books, City of Jinns, um, he it's clear that he's sourced a lot of his information from archives in India. So definitely worth checking out. Seems like a nice excuse to me to visit India again. Fibis. Okay, Fibis, value partners of uh, Find My Past. Um, we published some records for Fibis. They have a lot more on their website. Uh, I am a member of Fibis. Um, it's inexpensive to 
be a member of uh, become a member of Fibis. Um, they do good work. The website is difficult to use, uh, frustratingly difficult to use, but um, but they have some good material there. A lot of it is freely available um, on the Fibby wiki. Um, and you don't have to be a member to, to view that but members do get additional benefits and can see records that non-members can't see so i would recommend fibis wholeheartedly nice people um peter bailey the former chairman uh, has written some uh, very useful books which i'll come to shortly in the reading list um and uh, as i say I, I i endorse them i think they're an organization worthy of support uh, cabristan archives is another one of our partners as uh, a small one person organization um, you'll find records there from ireland uh, ceylon and now sri lanka um, and, and india and again um, use, useful records there um, eileen the owner of the site has spent many years uh, traveling to and from uh, india nepal and sri, sri lanka um, transcribing grave records for the most part um, so it's, it's, a, it's a useful site and um, you know, have explored that website as well. So it's cabristan.org.uk. Uh, Baxa is another one as well. I, again, I'm a fan of Baxa. I don't belong to ba to Baxa, but it's the British Association for Cemeteries in South Asia. I have a number of Baxa books, um, the cemetery record books, which can be very useful. So you'll find you would expect to find a lot of the um, burial records on Find My Past in our British India office collection. But it's worth noting that we don't have everything. There's we've probably got 75% coverage of, uh, of the records in India for, for baptism, marriage and burial. So we don't have everything and you will find some that we don't have in these books. You'll also find inscriptions which we won't necessarily have as well. So it's worth checking these out. If you go to baxa.org.uk uh, you will find uh, there's a bookshop there and you can see what's available. Um, and uh, again, worthy a uh, worthy organization and um, needed really because the cemeteries in India are not always maintained well. Um, there's uh, There seems to be at times little regard for the heritage um, and cemeteries are bulldozed, graves are reused and recycled etc. So, so the work that Baxter have done uh, has been very important to preserve for posterity the names of people uh, buried uh, in India and those who lived in India as well. Um, for recommended reading, um, I would uh, mention I mentioned Peter Bailey, uh, researching ancestors in the East India Company and researching ancestors in the Indian Army. Had I been able to get to the office uh, since March, I would have pulled his book off my desk and referred to it in time for this presentation. But uh, but um, that's been out of bounds for me. So so I only have my memory um, to to remind me of, of uh, how useful a resource this is so so in, in that case it's the ancestors in the Indian army which is the book I've referred to um, you've also got uh, Ian Baxter's uh, biographical sources in the India office records Emma Jolly more recent tracing your British uh, Indian ancestors and Rosina Visra Asians in Britain I can say I've not read any of those last three books um, I have mentioned William Dalrymple I think he's a fantastic uh, author. Um, pretty sure I, f I was walking behind him in Hyderabad some years ago as well actually. Um, uh, um, anyways, if it wasn't him, he certainly looked like him. Um, the Anarchy, uh, which is about the East India Company, it's the most recent book published in 2019. Um, the Last Mughal and White Mughal I have read and enjoyed very much. Uh, Return of the King, I have a uh, Return of a King rather, I, I haven't read, but, but I do recommend uh, William Dalrymple who's uh, divides his time between uh, England and India. So uh, that's that's it. It's um it's a skim through the records of uh, that we have. Uh, as I mentioned, the key the key records for most people will be the, those ones, the baptisms, marriages, and, and burials. But there are other records as well uh, for the uh, Indian civil list, wills and probate, etc. Um, as I say, I'm not going to go through all of those because you can do that yourself. You can select the records and then look at those individual record sets and uh, decide whether it's for you or not. And each of those collections has some narrative which explains what you'll find and when you go to the search screen you'll be able to see what you can search for but you know if you do have uh, ancestors who served in india uh, you need to you need to check the records out the, the british india collection on find my past i recommend you 
construct your own search screen as I showed you at the beginning of this talk and I recommend you also look at the newspapers as well. So that's it. I hope it's been useful. Um, happy hunting and thank you for listening. Goodbye.